All right. Good. Madeline, you want to get us started? Yep. Um, can you maybe address the um, low income transit pass fee a little bit? Um, when did you hear about that, that new online fee that had been implemented? I hate when I answer a question in this way, but I heard about it in the media. Um, and uh, even before I was able to follow up, uh, the Calgary Transit determined that they would not charge that fee to low-income transit pass users. Other people who buy online will still be subject to it, I believe, uh, which I think is fair, but it didn't make any sense to buy a $5 pass and have a $2.50 fee tacked onto it. So I'm very pleased that's been sorted. Uh, what, were, what were your concerns if that had continued? Well, simply that. You know, it's a, if you buy something online, uh, and you have to pay a 50% handling fee, especially if you're a low-income person. That's not fair. To be honest, I was trying to think about ways in which we could mitigate that, um, that we're not just get rid of the fee, but perhaps make the low-income pass available at more locations. This is a better solution. So people don't have to come downtown. They can uh, buy online uh, as long as you do it well before the end of the month, and that pass can be sent to you. What does it say that, um, you know, other cities are opening up uh, shelters or extra shelters because of cold weather, and we used to open up the grandstand, but uh, Katie Black said there's no need to do that. What does that say about what's happening in the city and the homeless population? Yeah, we should be okay. Uh, as you know, uh, since the advent of the 10-year plan to end homelessness, we have fewer homeless people. Uh, there are still people who are living rough, who are sleeping rough, I should say. Um, in encampments and so on, who I worry a lot about uh, in this kind of weather. We are not a community in which anyone should ever freeze to death. Uh, there should be services available. Uh, and there are, that's the good news. The shelters are not yet operating at capacity. They remain open 24 hours. It's not like the old days where they kicked you out during the day and you had to go find somewhere to be. Uh, and certainly services are available. And I really want to encourage Calgarians if you see someone who is in distress, if they're in medical distress, call 911 right away. That's what it's there for. Uh, if you see someone who you think maybe needs a talking to in a sense of what their options are, call the Downtown Outreach and Addictions Program team. That's the DOPE team. Uh, they're easy to find. Uh, put the phone number in your phone, particularly if you live or work downtown, uh, and they will dispatch someone to help the individual. Now, can I ask you, a colleague is asking yes. about the uh, TIPS program. Yes. And you know, people in November get their bills. Let's say your uh, your 12-month average will increase by X amount, and this business owner is about 27 percent. Is there anything can be done that people for people that face these big increases? Yeah. So it's important to remember that nobody has their tax bill yet. Uh, you have your assessment, but you won't have your tax bill until after the provincial budget, uh, sometime in late April or May. And so the tips program is just an estimate. Um, but it's a way to pay your taxes over time, and if it ends up being too much, then you'll pay less uh, going forward uh, so that you end up paying the exact amount. Now that said, remember that last year there was a one-time rebate. So although business taxes have been cut this year, the rebate's also gone. So some businesses will see some increases. Um, the one that you mentioned, thankfully, would be one of the largest ones we see. There's, it's not a year of 100 200% increases uh, anymore, which is great. Um, but that said, I suspect that Council will have a conversation at our next meeting in a couple of weeks of the Priorities and Finance Committee about whether or not we want to spend some more money on another final, final one-time rebate to ease people into the transition to the new normal. Um, sir, the uh, province uh, <coughs> did away with the cap on insurance. I wonder if that's not affect the city of Calgary. I don't, I, I, that's a great question. I don't think so, um, because the City of Calgary is such a large organization and we do a lot of self-insurance uh, for our fleet, but uh, that is a question I can find out more about and get back to you. Anyone else? More shootings on the weekend. Yes. You know, as I've been saying um, since the beginning of the year, Calgary remains an extraordinarily safe city. Someone came up to me and said, this is not like it was in the 70s and in the 80s, and that's true. It was actually much less safe in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, and even as we've grown, our overall rates of crime have remained steady or even gone down in many cases. Now, it's easy for me to say that all of the shootings uh, and the homicides that we've seen in the first part of this year are all unrelated, and they are. And it is just sort of a strange coincidence 
that all of this stuff is happening at the same time. But I also understand that it makes people feel very uncomfortable. And ultimately, our goal is to make sure that Calgarians feel safe every day walking down any street in the community. And that's something that we have got to abide by and we've got to live by every day. So I want to say if people are feeling unsafe, uh, if they are feeling trauma from some of these things that are happening, there are lots of services available. You can call 211 or the Calgary Police Service Victims Unit. Uh, who can really assist you with uh, getting you connected with resources that might be able to help you. But the most important thing in maintaining a safe city is not the outstanding women and men of the Calgary Police Service who do great work, but it's really a community understanding that violence is not permitted here. So if you are someone who is adjacent to, who knows about some of the stuff that's going on, it's time to help stop it. It's time to contact Crime Stoppers. It's time to work with the resources we have to get some of these folks off the streets and to have that happen now. Have you had your meeting with the police chief yet? I have. And anything you can tell us coming out of that? Uh, basically what I just said. Um, you know, it's really clear that uh, this is, the state of violence recently is an unfortunate coincidence. It's a mix of um, targeted family. It doesn't make it any better but it's a mix of targeted family domestic uh, issues as well as targeted gang stuff, as well as other things. And there doesn't seem to be a relationship between uh, what we've seen, but it is extremely unfortunate that this is all coming down at once. Uh, and certainly we're not on track to a great year, but I know that the year will get better. And no ask for additional resources or anything? Actually, no, not at all, not at all. Um, in the conversation that I had with the chief, uh, surprisingly for a conversation that I have with city managers, uh, the word budget did not come up. And when I asked what is it we can do to make sure that we help you, we talked a lot about prevention programs, about the programs we do with youth at risk, uh, and making sure that those remain priorities. Uh, you know, whenever you have a, a government that says we're all about law and order, they tend to forget about the prevention stuff that is as or more important. Uh, so to making sure that we're not taking our eye off the ball on that stuff and also to really reaching out to the community and saying it's part of all of our jobs to end this kind of violence. And uh, sir, you had a few comments this morning about the, uh, uh, the shooting down of the plane in Iran. I see the books of condolence are out right now. Um, can you just explain uh, why that's happening? Yeah, we have a book of condolence available here. Uh, in the atrium at City Hall for any Calgarian to come and sign and share their condolences. We'll be sharing those with the Iranian community here locally uh, as well as with the families of the victims in Edmonton and in other places. It means a lot uh, to people. You know, any time we have such a tragedy that hits not just our community but people across the country, it's something we feel very deeply as Canadians. Of course, we lost two Calgarians, a high school student just about to graduate grade 12, with an incredibly promising future, a gifted person who worked in the aeronautics and aerospace industry here in Calgary and by all accounts was doing extraordinary work. And of course our family to the north in Edmonton lost many people. And I've been really struck. I spent some time this week reading the biographies of the victims, the Canadian victims of this crash. And it really is unbelievable. These were teachers, professors, and students right people. They were people with extraordinary potential. They were Canadians. And I'm somewhat heartened by our community coming together. It doesn't matter what religion they were or how long they've been in this country. They were our neighbors. They were our family. And we mourn together with them.